Good evening, brothers and sisters. It's very good to see you all in the presence of our loving God. And let us pray before we jump into the message today. <clears throat> Dear gracious Father, we thank you so much for calling us under your love and grace. Father, we are now standing in front of your words. Please open our eyes so that we may see your face. Please open our ears so that we may listen to you. Please open our hearts so that we may heed what you are telling us today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Tonight, we are here to remember the most precious and glorious death throughout the human history. Jesus Christ died on the cross today. As we all know, today is Good Friday. In South Korea, we call it a little bit different. We call it Sacred Friday. So when I heard that it is Good Friday in English for the first time when I was a little, like middle school student, I was a little bit confused because I was asking myself, why is it good? What is it? Is the fact that Jesus died for us good? Is the fact Jesus Jesus' life was over today was that good? So I yeah I was I was I since the English was not my native language I didn't have any I didn't have a clear enough understanding about the word good, but later. I just realized that it is called Good Friday because by the death of Jesus Christ, we are saved. We are saved from the eternal condemnation because the beloved Son of God shed his blood on the cross. Thus, Good Friday is the day of redemption, reconciliation, and restoration. Tonight, we have read very long passage from John 18 to 1930. From the passage, I, I want to focus on two persons, two persons, Judas and Peter. We already know who they are. Both of them used to be followers of Jesus. Jesus had called them to follow him. They had chosen, they had chosen to follow him. However, in today's passage, we just found out that they both turned away from Jesus and betrayed him. Judas was the one who sold his rabbi to the Jews. Peter was the one who denied his Lord in front of the Jews. Yes, maybe some of you, to some of you, it seems radical, but I consider them on the same level. It is true, Judas' betrayer actually caused all this happen. On the other hand, Peter's betrayal was only meant to de defend himself from the Jews, from the threat of the Jews, but from my opinion, from my point of view, that doesn't change the fact that they both denied him, denied Jesus, in whom they had put their trust before. Moreover, what they did to Jesus was also done to themselves. They both had seen something in Jesus, in his life, in his teachings, and they both had witnessed miracles and changes Jesus did. And they both had decided to follow Jesus and devoted themselves to the new life coming from Jesus. Therefore, Judas' betrayal was actually 
a betrayal of himself, as well as, as, well as of Jesus. Peter's denial was actually a denial of himself as well as of Jesus. So, no matter what reasons cause them to do that, or no matter what kind of consequences were brought by their deeds, what they did to Jesus for the sake of their own must have broken them from the inside. They must have felt ashamed of what they did. My dearest brothers and sisters, I confess that I occasionally find myself standing on the same side of them. The world puts me into a trial and coerces me to making a choice between the gospel and the world. No matter how smart, how strong, and how thorough I think I am, the world is always, always smarter than me, bigger than me, stronger than me. As a human being, I am not free from making an awful choice. I always make foolish mistakes, deny my faith and belief, and betray what I dedicated myself to. Those failures to defeating the world and standing on the side of the gospel puts me down and breaks me from the inside. Yes, I am no different from both Judas and Peter in today's passage. I have to admit that I am a sinner. However, however, that is why today is called Good Friday, isn't it? Jesus Christ is crucified for sinners like me to save me from the eternal condemnation, to recover my ruined life, to reconcile my broken self, to redeem my incorrigible soul. Going back to the two betrayal, we all know they had different endings. Judas couldn't overcome despair and guilt, so he hanged himself on a tree. But Peter, on the other hand, he repented and became one of the powerful apostles and truly dedicated his whole life to the gospel. Tonight, I want to share with you about the very one thing that made this difference. It is written in Luke 22, 54 to 62. Please allow me to tell you about this passage briefly. After Jesus was arrested, people took him to the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance and was in the middle of the courtyard with some people. Then people started questioning Peter if he was one of Jesus' followers, and Peter denied. At the moment of the third denial, the rooster crowd and at the very moment, it is written in verse 61. Let me read it for you. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Now, I want to invite you to imagine this scene. Imagine yourself in the shoes of Peter. You were surrounded by the Jews who were eagerly trying to find something something, anything relevant to Jesus. And you are afraid in the midst of those people. And Jesus was, Jesus was right there, right in that house, surrounded by high priests. And at that place, you just denied Jesus. 
And at that moment, Jesus was looking at you, and you were looking at him. Can you catch that moment? Can you feel the moment? Then it is written in verse 62 Then Peter remembered the word of Jesus predicting his denials. He went out and wept bitterly. At the moment when he saw Jesus looking at him, denying his Lord. My beloved brothers and sisters, Peter was no different from Judas in that they both betrayed Jesus for the sake of their own. And Peter became one of the most powerful apostles afterward. But we have to remember that it was not because Peter was a strong man. Peter was a strong man enough to overcome all the despair and guilt. No, it was not that. Rather, we have to realize that it was because he realized Jesus was there looking at him. Jesus was there for him, with him, even at the very moment of the betrayal. It was because Peter became to acknowledge that it was not his strength or his dedication, but the love and grace of Jesus Christ that led his life. Peter finally admitted that his life was actually in God's hand at that moment. My beloved brothers and sisters at Covenant, we are just the same. Sometimes life tramples on and breaks us down. Sometimes it is too hard for us to live as Christians in this world. It is true that it is not easy to protect our faith at every moment of choice we face in our life. However, that is why God sent Jesus, the beloved Son, into the world. That is why Jesus died for us today. That is why we are gathering here to remember his sacrifice, love, and grace. We have to confess that we are sinners, just like Judas and Peter. We have to admit it is not us who controls our lives. We have to surrender ourselves and come to God, humble ourselves, and put our trust in God. Then God will embrace us into God's arms forgive our sins, call us his sons and daughters. And God will lead us into the eternal life in his kingdom. Jesus Christ, our Lord, died for us today to save us from sin. Let us remember his sacrifice and embrace his love and grace into our hearts. And let us be the channel so that God's steadfast love flows over our family and our community through us. May the Lord be with us all the time. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly God, we thank you so much for giving us new life, new opportunity. Through the death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our loving God, we confess that we are nothing but sinners. 
It is only your love and grace that hold us firm and lead our lives. Dear our gracious God, please forgive our sins and let us rejoice in you. Please pour out your spirit on every single one of us so that we may walk in the light of your unfailing love. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. <laughs>